Is okay. one of them? Wait, let me. All right, you can start. Yeah, but okay. I'm gonna put a 30 minute timer on. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna start already. So I go. All right. Wine first. Yes. This is a Muscat organic wine. Organic. Na natural wine. Natural wine. Oh yeah, natural yeah. wine. That's like the the wave right now. Yeah. Speaking of natural wine, though, I don't I don't know exactly how I feel about it. Thank you. But a lot of people say that. It tastes different. It's better for you. You get less hangovers. Mm. You can't tell the difference. You can't tell the difference. I really can't tell the difference. But you do taste. I talked with Sabrina about this actually. Okay. It tastes more mineral. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So. Thank you. Cheers. Come by. Come by. Cheers. This actually is different. Mm -hmm. It does when taste different. Yeah. When, it, when it's hot outside, mm -hmm. delicious. Yeah, this is really nice. Let's uh, self introduce first from. Okay, so my name is Sabrina. Um, I am originally from Vancouver, Canada, uh, but my mom is Japanese, and I just moved to Tokyo permanently about. It's been officially a month now, so. Um, I'm really excited to be here, and I've known Demario and Ken. We met three years ago, um, and it's nice to reconnect with them again. We should definitely talk about how we got connected, right? Oh, okay. We're getting <laughs> personal. Okay. Right. Um, yeah. Wait, let's 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 go with the story. Okay. Story. Okay. No, no, no. So <laughs> Wait. Hold on. Let's let's keep this in a section of its own. Okay. Okay. Right, go ahead. Um, <laughs> All right, guys. Like my name is Demario. If you don't know me, uh, originally from New York, um, now Japan is my home. And I know these two fine human beings right here to my left and right. Uh, I've known them for over three and four years. Wow. And, uh, Long time. Wow. Yeah. yeah, Ken. Um, from Japan originally, born in Korea actually. Hmm. Uh, so I'm half Korean, half Japanese. Lived in Korea for around 18 years, then moved to LA for college for around four to five years. Moved back to Japan because I got deported because I didn't have a fucking visa. Oh, I remember this story, <clears throat> yeah. Damn. Yeah, so I didn't have the time or the lead time for me to get a job in the States because I didn't have a visa. Mm. And it was during the time when Trump was in office as well. Damn. So yeah, being oh in God. the US is a lot, was a lot more strict for, I guess, immigrants. Mm. Mm. Like, yeah. Mexicans <clears throat> and wait, wait, year was this? Like 20? This was 20, uh, 2019 or 2020. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's why you were in Japan, right? Or no, that's exactly, that's the only reason why I'm here. Oh, Otherwise, you would still Otherwise, be I'll be like working at some fucking office in the States. <gasps> so, Wait, that's yeah. so crazy. Yeah. You know, like the world works. Wait, like, that's wow. almost like a great, a great excuse to be here. Like a great mistake. Yeah, I mean, it's a yeah, happy accident, right? Yeah, very um, happy accident. Wow. But I also do believe in fate. I do believe yeah. in fate, I 100% yeah. believe in fate, and I really believe that I was destined to be in Japan. So... You know, I don't, I don't really think of, you know, being deported from the U.S. like that. So, I think um, I'm very happy where I'm at right now. Yeah. Wow. So much has like changed for you from that time to like now. Mm -hmm. like, I feel like you've really based yourself here now. So. The thing is, the crazy thing is, I actually hated Japan. No way. At the beginning. No way. At the beginning. What like what did you like what were, did you feel like was really I feel like hard for you to like get into the I just didn't like Japanese culture that much. Really? Was that because you didn't know much about it at the It was time? because I I went to you know, I you know, lived in Korea, so I go to Japan every now and then to visit my dad and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I was super used to the Japanese culture being all like, you know, man well mannered, you know, uh, kind of Keeping your morals aligned, so to say, mm. you know, being ethically right and stuff like that. Yeah. So, I hated that kind of idea, I guess. Mm. 
So I glamorize about U.S. culture a lot. That's why I want to. That's why I joined the frat, actually. Mm, I want okay. to be like, like, unrestricted. Just kind of be free. Mm. Yeah. Be free, be free in like what sense? Just like, just like no rules. I guess like compared to Asia, I like, guess like <coughs> North America is so much more like free and less strict, right? Just being an absolute degenerate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> To put it simply, okay. you can't be you can't be a degenerate in Asia, Southeast Asia at least. Mm. Like especially being raised from a strict family. True. So like, what about alcohol? Like, are they very strict with <laughs> alcohol? And stuff? I mean, you kind of sneak out and stuff like that during okay. high school and shit. I mean, of course, I'm pretty sure the parents like already know what's going on behind the scenes yeah. and stuff like that. But usually, like, you know, you sneak out. Go out for a few drinks, come back home, or come back home bef- uh, after you sober up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it was a kind, of, it was kind of a hassle living mm. in Korea, but it yeah. is what it is. I feel like Korea or like South South Asia, if you like drink with your parents or family, it's okay. Like they allow it, but like publicly, no. You know. Wait, really? Yeah. Publicly? I don't. I I feel like there's such a heavy like drinking culture in Korea from what I experienced like I think a lot of people there it's like a lot of cafes like cafe hopping but then like yeah people drink a lot in Korea Um, it's funny you say that because Korea is Korea is one of the most you know alcohol consumed yeah consuming countries in the world right (laughs) they truly believe alcohol is a medicine to everything yeah Yes. And to to be strict um, with consuming alcohol, Thank you. being raised in a family, I'm okay. Are you good? Yeah. It's almost like contradicting. Like, it's con- counterintuitive mm. in terms of like, oh, it's a society where alcohol is normalized, but your family doesn't allow it. They're even more strict. Um, yeah. With you going out and grabbing drinks with your friends and stuff like that. So it's very counterintuitive in that sense. So I think Korean culture progressed into at the right age and the, at the right time. You do as you please. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like, okay, c- compare that with like North America. I feel like because I grew up like my parents being very strict with me as well. Um, but I feel like when you restrict your kids to do something, like, you become like more rebellious oh. and I feel like it's better to like 100% I feel yeah. like what? were both of you guys rebellious during your life? like a little bit yeah like yeah I was yeah. bad I got lots of scars <laughs> and stuff were you bad? yeah I was bad I was always getting into stuff and I like, hurt myself you know you seem so like tame like I know yeah. Like, I just, like, yeah you seem super calm very yeah. like obedient in terms of like yeah. rules laws whatever yeah, yeah like over time it kind of Super well, ma- super well mannered. I never hear you swear. Yeah, I literally <laughs> Dude, never hear you Have you noticed that? I, I literally never hear him curse. I've heard him say like <laughs> fuck Actually. maybe like twice. The yeah. Four years <laughs> but I, years I do say it though. I mean, you barely say it, man. I mean, I don't have to say it all the time. Like, it's not necessary. We know it's not necessary. Yeah. <laughs> but I told you before, that's something that I look up to in terms of like mm. minimizing profanity yeah. as much as possible because I feel like in this culture that we live in now, uh, swearing has become like our failures in, yeah. in, in some sense. Like it's not even like mean anything, you just say it. It's, exactly. It's so vulgar. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean I learned a lot from you in that sense. It's not necessarily derogatory when you when you speak, you know, like cuss words. It's just more of an expression. So if you say like something's like dang, like very shocking, you don't say like, oh dang, you say like damn, you know? Damn. So it's like an it's an expression of saying how much you want mm-hmm. to Emphasize mm-hmm. the the action, I guess. Yeah. 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 But, but anyway, going back to how you guys have met and how we all kind of connected. Oh, okay. Oh, we're going there. We should. We should. <laughs> you guys. You guys can explain. Oh, I don't know. You, you you decide. You guys can explain. <laughs> what? You remember? Like us? Yeah. Yeah. Remember obviously, remember? I re- Of course, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Instagram, right? Yeah. 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 Go ahead, bro. So yeah, we met on Instagram. 
Was it? Uh, hey, yeah. no, 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 like, sheer coding this shit. Like, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> yo, just be honest. Like, okay, you guys, you guys can, you know. We should like, we should have uh, leave out, leave out details. Honestly, honestly, uh, so like we met on a, uh, a dating app. Mm -hmm. Cause at that, like during the time, like, you know, it was rough. Yeah. It was rough kinda, times. Uh, yeah. I just, you know, some, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, yeah, we met on a dating yeah. app and then, yeah, like I basically swiped on her and then <laughs> Whenever she's like, yeah. it was on this he app. It was on the, it them. was on the, it wasn't Tinder. I don't like Tinder, but it was a, it was a like a app. more wholesome dating app. Yeah, right? like it, was in ba it was Bumble. In Japan, it's, that one's more wholesome. Um, yeah. It doesn't have like that connectivity to other stuff, but it's good. Like people still use it now. But anyways, uh, mm -hmm. we met through Bumble and you know, like when I saw her, I was like, damn, who's this? And I swiped <laughs> on her and then I, I mean like, Truth be told, I was kind of shocked when she like matched with me too, because when I swiped, she already matched with me, and I was like, "Damn, okay, so let's 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 do this." So then, like, we hung out, and then, like, I, Wait, don't know, I think I'm a very when you person. when you swiped on Sabrina, Cut. did you think you were on for a lead? Why do you have so <laughs> like what? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie though. No, because yeah. you said you were surprised, right? That's why I'm gonna... For a second, because like, you know, there are bots, right? There are she bots. Mm -hmm. For a second, I thought it was a bot, but she's real. <laughs> I, I'm she's real, real. I'm real. So, um, yeah, I swiped, we matched, and then I sent the message. I don't know what I said, but I said something super simple. But, like, all I remember, I don't remember exactly, but you were very, like, slot. Like, you were very, like, good with your words. Like, it was like, interesting conversations that we were having so i was intrigued so you're very witty huh i guess you're i can't like witty over text like you're a wordsmith huh yeah a wordsmith you'd be sharpening your edges with those uh vocabularies what is that? Un <laughs> unspoken <laughs> <laughs> unspoken words i guess right uh-huh we're gonna continue but uh yeah like i gave her a message and then she messaged back and then she, you know, like, the conversation was going really well. Mm -hmm. And then, like, out of nowhere, I didn't ask for her number or, like, social. She asked her mind. I was kind of like, no, really? there's no way. Because, like, there are bots sometimes. No, it's true. You have to be careful. And they're like, hey, let me, let me get your number. And then all of a sudden, you get, like, these spam messages and stuff. But, like, <laughs> she He, he took the sentence. risk. He took the risk. And... Here we are now, so. Yeah, but like, truth, like, long story short though, I didn't realize like, I guess my look, a lot of times, I don't really meet a lot of people. Like, even though there's dating apps, you can meet a lot of people. Uh, I'm very, really, like, really selective of who I meet. And then I just felt like, mm. like some really strong connection, even though we hadn't physically met. But then yeah. my, I guess my intuition was pretty, pretty solid. Mm. So then when we met, I was like, damn, that's crazy, cause like, yeah, we were like, you're really good. like a real person who's, who's like, like mad cool. Oh, you know? thank you. But well, I want to hear your side of the story as well. Like, <laughs> what made you want to swipe on Demari and Um, honestly, like, like this is like so long ago, but I think like <laughs> no one really interested me. Um, hmm. I'm like trying to remember. Like, there's something about your profile that intrigued me, so. I, I swiped and then like it's been so long so I can't remember I'm being completely honest but I just remember he was very good like he like always kept the conversation going like it was never like stale conversation I was always like wanting to talk more and I don't know I don't think I would have gone like we met up in Yokohama one time I don't think I would have gone that far for like a random person like I really felt like he's like a a genuinely like really down to earth guy and yeah like also like what he said I felt like this I had this good feeling that he was like a really good guy and yeah that's I mean stating the obvious though she's like very attractive so that yeah, was really the stable. first thing that caught my eye yeah and then after that and that's how I connected with Sabrina as well because 
Did you FaceTime me or yeah, some shit? Face, like, it was face he was fa- He FaceTimed me saying that he was on a date with this girl and then I was with uh, a few of my friends as well. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. FaceTimed me and then I was like, who's that? And then, <laughs> and then she showed up. She came in and she was like, hey, I'm Sabrina and stuff like that. And I was like, oh shit, okay, I see you. Yeah. I see you guys, I won't distract you. <laughs> and then when we ended the call, I actually DM'd Mario saying, yo. <laughs> <laughs> <Who's that>? <laughs> <laughs> yo. <laughs> so I, we have this thing, I think, like for me to show like my immediate friends who I'm going out with, mm-hmm. it's kind of like, it's rare. And I feel like very comfortable to show that. Like, So if I show you to Ken before you met Ken it's like that means like to me you're like solid like you're a solid Um, girl so then I show Ken and then at the same time I kind of know Ken's taste and we have to like kind of like same taste so you know I don't know good judgment no I mean like (laughs) yeah I mean like like, yes 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 like eventually yes 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 and then certain standards right so like when I showed you I was like yeah you're definitely gonna like approve approve of this so then when I showed you he always, okay. basically, what he does is whenever, no, it's okay. Don't worry. Yeah. You know, whenever he goes on a date or whenever he, whenever he's like, oh, what do you think of her? It's usually a, a miss. Yeah. Um, like, it's usually a, a, I don't, I think you can do better, bro. Yeah. Um, like 80% of the time. I kind of right? feel like that too, but I just have to get the approval. You know? And then there's a hand, like, there's a few that I was like, okay, I mean, why don't you go on a date and find her out? Like, can I, can I ask you a question though? Like, what what would it be about like most of these girls that you would say no to? Is it like like the vibe? I don't is know. Like, I mean, it's based on like I don't like like object like objective vibe or anything. No, but like, like, like when you when you show me a picture of a girl, I'm like you could do better. Mm-hmm. I, knowing your standards, mm-hmm. so it's not like oh she, she might be like the coolest person ever. She mm-hmm. might be super chill. And I actually might like that more than just like her physical looks. Mm. But I can't judge that because I don't, I've never spoken to her to, I, I don't know what she's like. I don't know what she's interested in. That's yeah. why I just based off on just looks. Mm-hmm. And then, you know. It goes a long way. Yeah. I mean, we're human. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, I mean I'm sure like, girls too, no? No, like, like we, we're all like, oh, that's so shallow. But like at the end of the day, like you're either like physically attracted to someone or you're not and then like okay for me personality is like more important but like obviously the first thing for me to be sexually attracted to someone is physically you know and then uh, after that it's like their personality like really enhances them more yeah true you don't meet a lot of people who look attractive physically and personally people people who say they they don't look at the physical. Yeah, that's like that's cap. No, they're just the, that's yeah, the yeah, biggest yeah, cap yeah, yeah, ever. Yeah. Like how? Like come on. Yeah. Okay, like if you had to like put a percentage, like looks and personality, like what would you do it? Like for example, me, like I think sixty personality and forty looks is kind of. Mm. Yeah. Forty sixty. Forty sixty. Forty. I'm gonna be looks, super yeah. boring here, but it's fifty. Fifty fifty. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say the exact I mean, same it's thing. That's fine. Like that's yeah. okay. But at the same time, like sometimes personality can outshine their looks. Yeah. So that changes the entire game. Oh, curious. What about style? Is that important too? Yeah, I feel like it is. It is. Okay. Because as you guys know, um, me personally, I don't, I didn't get interested into like fashion because of like approval of men. I want, I wanted approval of women. You know. Mm. So that was my like introduction. Honestly. Yeah, we were actually we talked about this a lot too. Mm-hmm. Um, how fashion is like a giant circle jerk of dudes, just kind of like seeing who has the better fit, seeing who has the better fit, seeing who has the more expensive like clothes and shit like that. But at the end of the day, what's important is if you like it and if you know, like you yourself. If you yourself okay, like yeah. it, that's what's more. That's the most important aspect in fashion, right? I agree. And if you're comfortable in that skin, but like Mario said, it's more for us. It's more to do with, you know, just dressing for ourselves, but also dressing for the partner. Yeah. Right. So. Um, um, interesting. There's two sides, really. Um, so we sometimes do circle jerk, but we also, 
try to, <laughs> you know, romanticize our fashion outfits. Mm. And, so like, what's like a like a type of outfit that like, if you're like trying to like woo a woman, I guess right now, like you're going on a date, you want to impress her. Like, what kind of outfit would you? I'll wear this. Okay. Except for the sandals, obviously. This <laughs> something that's not very brand name, but okay. maybe more like, let's say you wear like Joe Sander boots. Mm -hmm. like derbies they don't have like the big logo but like those shoes look very interesting and then yeah. isn't the ones you wear it's my no those are those are the ones. Yeah. but this is a, this is a tricky part about fashion silhouettes really when it's when it comes to dressing for or dressing for the occasion for the partner right mm -hmm. is uh you have to dress to make her feel comfortable yeah, you have to make her feel easy about the atmosphere, the environment. Mm -hmm. You can't be fucking like coming up with a fucking suit and a bow tie, <laughs> yeah. making her feel super uncomfortable. Chill, yeah. I think that's true. What? I think that's yeah, true. yeah, I agree. It 100%, I'll hundred percent take a uh, sweatpants and a baseball cap over a suit. Yeah, because if he's wearing a suit, I'm like, okay, are you gonna like propose to me or something? Exactly. Like, is it like? <laughs> Do you agree that, like, if the guy outdressed you? How would that make you feel? Mm. Like, would you feel like, damn, he's getting more attention than I am, or you? Um, it like depends what I'm wearing, but I don't think it would really bother me personally. But I think for some women, it would bother them. Yeah. I think most women, it's like a thing. Like, if the guy. I feel like if anything, the girl has to outdress the man. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I feel like there's always that like dynamic. I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like, I don't really. So what, what what are your personal kind of, I guess, preference in terms of guys when you... Like... What, yeah, what makes you... Attract you attract what attracts you? Yeah, exactly. I ask myself this, like, do I have, like, a physical type? No. Mm -hmm. I feel like I don't really, like, care that much, that much, like, wait, I'm sorry, like, ethnically or whatever. Like, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't, like, I think it really comes... Ugh, that's a good question. <laughs> good spot. Um, I think like it really comes down to like their personality. To be honest, like I know that's kind of a boring answer, but um, if they have good like taste in um, fashion, I don't know. I don't know how to. Like, but at the same time, your first things. impression is the looks, right? That's what draws I mean, you. Yeah, towards of them. course, but I don't know what it is. Like, there's just some element mm -hmm. that I'm attracted to. I don't, I think you know what I like very. Like, is there a height requirement? Is there a physique that you like? Is there a height requirement? <laughs> no <laughs> hairstyle you like? Is no, there... because like I feel like it's really ranged, but I feel like I like alpha type men. I've noted. I've realized, which has kind of backfired me, backfired on me before. But um, yeah. Like Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Like Tom Hanks. Like. Yeah, he's like. Um, no, uh, not, 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 not like that. that Conf is... Confident. Oh, confident. Yeah, I like confident men. Confident, confidence is very important. Yeah. Like, so I just don't... taking the lead, basically. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I like a man that can take charge. Like, I can feel like he can, like, if Take something... care of you and shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Like, you just chill in the background, and they just like, hey, can you come with me? I'll show you to a nice place. Yeah, I okay. like that. Okay. Because, like, I'm pretty indecisive. But, um, what was I going to say? Like, I think something I find attractive is, like, guys who don't, like, boast. Like, they, 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 everyone has an ego, but they don't, like, try to show off to other people about, like, how much money they have or, like, whatever. Like, humble. They're, they're humble. I find, hu like, humble men really attractive. Yeah. So low-key. More low-key. I find that attractive. Mm -hmm. Like. But then if they have, like, stuff going on with them. And that, I guess that people recognize it, but they don't like, again, they don't like, hey, I do this and that, blah, blah, blah. But then you see the reaction from other people mm -hmm. when they're like with you. And you're mm -hmm. like, damn, well, like, what's going on? You're like, what do you do now? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, if, so, if two people are like, if, if they're like, I don't, sorry, I don't. Like, obviously, everybody knows like Ken, right? Yeah. So the people who come to Tokyo, like, they, they see Ken. And they may come with their friends, like just like the other day, right? 
uh, like really humble guy. It was good. He took he wanted to take photos with us, and we you know we we like offered. I mean like we uh, accepted the the photo. So like I mean all welcome. But he took a photo with us, and then I guess his friends was kind of like who's who are them you know kind of thing. And then, like, after he told them who we were, like, what it, like, that our interests and stuff, they were like, oh, okay. So, like, if you was in that situation and you didn't know, like, kind of, like, our hobbies mm. and our likes, mm -hmm. you would just be like, like, what the hell is going on? Mm -hmm. But then when you find out, you're like, damn, you didn't tell me this? Mm -hmm. So, it's kind of like... Oh, I see what you mean. Like, low-key, like, you don't have to say. Exactly. You kind of find out, like... I mean, it's okay if you do. It's just, like, I feel like some people, like, I feel like people who are, like, really insecure are always trying to prove themselves to others, and um, I don't think that that's nece necessary if you're, like, mm -hmm. confident in yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I find that attractive, just, like... How do you think guys can build confidence for those who don't have confidence? Uh, one thing is, I think what they all say is just, like, do some type of physical activity because once you're like confident in your like the way you look the rest is like the like the world is basically yours after that like things just come naturally to what you like and what yeah you like. that's the start mm. yeah build the body you know build the mind mm -hmm. read some books same with women too you know really yeah it's like yeah well, when you like when you focus on taking care of yourself physically and mentally i think you just feel it's like a it's like a cycle cycle you, you feel mm. better and then it makes you want to like do stuff that's better for your health and then it's just you keep doing those things so like i have a question for you guys mm -hmm. um so like there's three human desires core human desires mm -hmm. uh i'm gonna know which one you guys are or which one like is primary for you is uh sex food and sleep which one Sex, food, and sleep. Yeah, which one is like <clears throat> most important? Most important for you. I think in um, order it's... or just like no, it's no order. It's just like mm -hmm. first one, first, first sleep. Sleep. Yeah. I think so. That's crazy, sure. man. That's why we friends. That's yeah. why we all like. No. Wait, is that your answer yeah. as well? If you had, if you were to rank it, I mean, obviously the sex, right? Really, I put sex. In Last nah. I food is so important it's, to me, dude. Like, I think it's good for um like mental health. Mm. Sex. Yeah. Really. One hundred percent. I mean, guys. I mean, both guys yeah. and girls. They can. Yeah. You know. Just it's, take. Do, <laughs> but it's not the same. same. Like it's better when you. I know it's. Just, I know it's not the same. But like. Yeah, but that's like a hard question because like you can live with okay, you can live without sex, but you cannot live without sex and food. I mean, sorry, you cannot. Live without, without sleep, sleep and food, and food. Mm -hmm. but it's like if you if you have all like you say you don't die from starvation then you were to choose the three dude i mean there are fucking japanese people that are 50 year old virgins and they're fucking happy like sex no I way feel like no way I, I dude, really the, the culture society they're marrying is like anime pillows and shit because the the culture <laughs> the like they <laughs> in japan is so different than like America. Yeah, I know. America people, is like super kind of like people like very like pessimi piss pessimistic pessimistic for real. Like you can't meet a stranger in Japan and just like, hey, how are you? And they'd be like, hey, right? Yeah, that's true. So it's very reserved. Like you don't yeah. Like have but, a, okay. Like maybe during college I would have prioritized sex over everything. Right? But as you grow older, as you age you start to realize what you need to prioritize. Sleep. First. Sleep. We all agree on sleep. Sleep. 100%. We all agree on that. But food is just as important as sleep. That's true. And sex, sure. You, I can live with having sex once a month. Right? I'm but food for me is like an essential like component to my life every day. Mm. And that's what helps me go to sleep. That's what helps build my body, my mind. Right? But if you depend on sex as your mental stress reliever, it's actually really bad for you. It's not depending though. But you said it's not depending. What you said it's not depending. <laughs> what you said, bitch. I like it. I was. Like it. You said that ah, I need to 
let it out sometimes. I mean, like, I do like it. This would be real, like... No, I know. I like it, too. It's important. It's I think it's very important as well. But it, if, from the list that you gave, I think it's the least priority for me. So it's number... It's number three. Number yeah, three. it's on the bottom. But yours is sleep, sex, sex and then food. food? Yeah, if we had to do it in, like, a ranking system, I would do it that way. But just, like, straight off the, like, right off the bat, sleep is, like, no I, I actually have a very hard time believing that because you're so fucking picky with food. Number three. You're so picky with food. Every time when we, when we go out, like, and eat, you're like, is there vegan food available? I mean, like, I can't really have... I don't like certain stuff, though. You can't eat pork, you can't eat beef, you can't... Yeah, I don't like pork, and I don't eat dairy, just because, like, exactly. my body doesn't... So, food it. actually might be your second most... Probably your first most important thing. Because you have allergic reactions, you're... So, you're saying you... Okay, like, if you had to choose between the two, you could live without food, but you couldn't live without sex. True. That's a good point. Yeah. Yep. You can live without food, but you can't live without sex. Uh, that's so saying. like hard, though. <sighs> All right, now if I had to be in survival mode and I was by myself, like food, but like it's, there's different. Yeah, it depends right? on the situation. But like in exactly. a normal situation where just like we say everybody's like pretty stable and safe and secure and all this, yeah, it would definitely come last because I think me personally, I I can cook my own food, so if I want to make something, I I know like what to get. Instead of going out to buy it. Okay, so if you prioritize sex as your second most important factor to survive on, um, how often would you say you'd have to have sex per month to satisfy your needs and your wants? Three. Three times a month? A week. Have you? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I feel like that's like, that's, yeah, that's pretty Three times a week. Three times a week. But if you're in a long-term relationship, you know that diminishes naturally, oh, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Exactly. So that's when you start to um, That's like a pessimistic way of like looking at like long-term relationships. It's kind of like a way. It's like three times a week. Bro. No. Mm-hmm. Like I was in like a long-term relationship. I was like having sex like at least like I don't know five times a week. Like I don't know. Like I I feel like it's important, but like I still Word. rank. But I still rank food above sex, even though I'm a very sexual person. Like. Food still, like. Let's agree that we're all relatively sexual people here. (laughs) Honestly, I thought I needed to have sex like at least three, three to four times a week. But But once you start to get into a relationship and that starts to progress, yeah, it just somehow diminishes because you start to prioritize other things. But like, especially at a crucial point of time in your life. Mm Especially if you're in your late 20s and your 30s, that's when you make a mark, right? That's when you're like, fuck, I need to accomplish this. I need to do this. True, I, true. Yeah, yeah, you need to more focused. Exactly. So, my yeah, heart, true. heart has changed, right? Mm-hmm. So, that, I, I totally that was, that. yeah. You, you guys can relate to that. When I yeah. moved back here, I was totally focused on, like, just work, just trying to get my face out there for, like, these, like, just like straight work, so I was wasn't even trying to meet like girls like that. But then once like, moving in, getting an apartment, like just like mm-hmm. just getting your essentials, like I was so focused on that, uh, but I didn't have time for like women, you know. No, I was su- I totally because like maybe like three to four years ago, like I was super against relationships. Like, why were you against relationships? Not against it. I was just like mm-hmm. not prioritizing it. Mm-hmm. I wanted to have fun, I wanted to meet other people, I wanted to do this and that. Ex- <laughs> Ooh. Say it Why did it pop up like that? Sparking pressure. Um, but as you know, you, be, you go towards 30. Is that when you get more mature? It just changes, yeah. It just you get more changes. Yeah, so. I think it's like there's no right answer, it's just where your priorities are at right now. It's- but, Everybody's experience is different. Yeah. But still, okay, there are people who live to eat and then there are people who eat to live. And I live to eat. Like, I get derived so much pleasure from eating. So, like, 
Yeah, that's why. I think a lot of people can relate to that though. Yeah. Especially like in Japan, like yeah, the food is so fucking good. Like it's high quality. You feel more happier. The portions, yeah. Yeah. everything. Healthier too. Yeah. So depends. I feel like there's really range. But, but I, I get the point where in the West maybe, <clears throat> let's say, mm -hmm. where that priority might change. Yeah. Where sex might top food because the food. The quality of food there is incomparable. You got a point. You got a point. Right. You got a point. That's a solid point. Mm. Hmm. So, wait. <laughs> uh, you don't have to answer this. Oh, you're asking me? Yes. Okay. You don't have to answer this. Okay. Um, you can um, just say, I, I want to pass on this. But what do you, you what do you think? You're in a tough you position just here. Okay. All <laughs> this answer I'm just gonna, like, try to what do you yeah. think of the OnlyFans culture? Like, what do you think of that movement right now? Mm. Okay, I won't pass on that. Um, I have I have some friends that are OnlyFans um, creators. Um, I'm not against it. I think if, like, why censor it? Like, it's, 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 I don't know. Like, are you talking on the creator standpoint or more like as the... I mean, the viewer's standpoint is pretty because, easy, right? Like, I mean, I'm talking about the creator's perspective because there's so so few male only fans. Very okay, few. my question is, is that say your partner were to secretly or I don't know, just behind closed doors, create an only fans to follow other only fans, like for example, for me as a girl, like my boyfriend follows like, other only fans mm -hmm. pages. Is that like cheating? Because it's not like Porn. It's like you're you're like kind of like the thing about OnlyFans is that you can communicate with. That's a really good point where you say it's not like a porn, but. But it's more like it's, it's more like you communicate with. So like for me, it's like I I'm not against it, mm -hmm. but it's like I do think it can create a lot of problems within relationships if like the boyfriend, for example, has an OnlyFans account following girls with behind the girls back. Like, I don't know. It's like, do I... It's different variable. I have basically... friends, though, that... Um, yes. OnlyFans, yes. right? <laughs> yeah. But, I think I've had friends yeah. whose boyfriends had OnlyFans accounts and it really bothered them. Mm -hmm. There's nothing on the creator side. They're doing anything wrong. They're doing whatever they can to, like, make money, I guess. I don't blame them on that, but... My thing is, like, why would a, a guy get jealous if it's just, like like virtually right like none of these guys are actually meeting the girl unless the girl agrees like hey i want to meet this person who's now i think that's different but again everybody's different in the sense of like who so like you had a say you had a girlfriend and then you didn't tell her you created an only fans and then like you were like following girls like you would think that that's okay like not that there's like i'm just asking genuinely like what? Like if I had an OnlyFans account? No, if you, yes. If you had a girlfriend, you mean? Yeah, he had a girlfriend and then he was like following. Other girls, yes. OnlyFans account. Like, do you think that's okay, for example? No. In that sense, no. But to say if the girl, because I, the way I look at the scenario, like obviously a woman will make 10 times more than a man on OnlyFans, right? Mm -hmm. But then the woman, like again, at, at least if she's not meeting these people, like mm -hmm. virtually, fair game, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's only virtual because like, everybody looks at somebody who's attractive online, but not everybody can meet that person. So it's like, dang, <clears throat> maybe it'll make me feel like a little special, like damn, like, I'm able to like, I'm, w I'm with this person, right? Mm -hmm. But then no one else has that like, accessibility. Okay, like, okay, this but, is like, like kind of off topic, but like, also kind of not like what is your like standpoint on like a guy going to a strip club when he has a girlfriend for example like what's your opinion on that uh, i'm not into strip clubs i don't okay. like them so i can't i, I, can't, I can't answer strip that. clubs and only fans is a completely different category yeah. i think i honestly think only fans is a subscription to another porn site Okay, and then what's I mean, because you're up? paying for it, right? And you're paying for paying to see other girls' bodies and what they do. Right. But isn't that what strip clubs are? It is like the it's extension of a. It, it is. Yeah. It is. Like yeah. light porn, born, whatever you call it. Um, strip clubs, on the other hand, it's. I mean, I I heard a lot of girls like going to strip clubs with their boyfriends for fun. For fun. Yeah. Yeah. 
as uh, yeah. and they actually support the strippers, right? Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. So that's where I see the difference. Um, I still think mm -hmm. OnlyFans. I mean, you guys can. I mean, you can do whatever you want with the app, but I only see it as a tool to market yourself. It's not. There's no right or wrong answers for OnlyFans, in my opinion. Yeah. There, there's no right or wrong. And but it, actually, go ahead. Let's say if my girlfriend did it. Let's say if, I, if my girlfriend made an OnlyFans account and started doing OnlyFans. I, uh, How would you feel about that? I'll completely go against it. Against it? Against it, yeah. Why? Tell me she's, why. She's selling her body to for, for other viewers to see. Like you want it to just be for you. Yeah, exactly. So you want to you want to feel like a little special, like, the, like the whole point of the rule, the existence of a relationship is gone to just by starting an OnlyFans account. Mm -hmm. But for guys to see OnlyFans, like other OnlyFans actors and shit like that, while in a relationship, I see it as just watching porn, right? Amateur porn or whatever. I mean, technically it is. It so, makes you feel a little special because it seems private, like, oh, they're sending me personally these videos and... Yeah. And yeah. Okay, but, like, what's your guys' opinions, like, when you're in a relationship? Like, do you watch porn? I don't yeah. watch I porn. think all guys will watch porn. Honestly. I think I used to watch a lot of porn when I was a kid, like, when I was younger. But after yeah. you hit 25 and above, if you, yeah. you start to just, like, I don't need this shit. Like, you once, can go out and, Once you get the real thing, you, you know, don't it, watch it as yeah. much. It's yeah. way different, right? you completely don't watch it as much once you get the real thing mm -hmm. and it's different you know but like i would say in, in terms of a woman like would you say women watch porn just as much oh, as yeah. men yeah yeah oh really like i feel like it's not as talked about it's like oh men watch porn women watch porn just as much yeah i think they're like yeah they're like savages of it. i think like Seriously. women are as sexual like as men i think there is as many sexual women as there are men I think mm. it's just, it's more portrayed in the media that men are more sexual, but I don't necessarily think that that's the case. Agreed. Yeah. I heard women are more horny though. Agreed. Yeah. But they, there's like very, actually, it depends on the age. Like, I think there's a certain point where women are actually more horny than men because like of our, like when we're supposed to like have babies, like I think mm. men are like really horny and like they're like, like early 20s like maybe even a little bit earlier because like they have their hormonal spike earlier but then women become hornier like in their late 20s i think thank you a little later a huh? Li little later yeah like i feel like i've heard women talk about how they're like horny and like their boyfriends or whatever aren't as horny anymore <laughs> like when they're older yeah maybe that depends on if the guy has like experience or not or like the woman because during like her earlier years she's just like going in but then like when i guess when a woman gets older she knows like what Which, needs to be yeah. done to be pleased a certain way right and and, and i do really think like it, it comes down to like when we are like most fertile i don't know i don't know much about i think uh, yeah like a ticking time bomb for women especially mm -hmm. because they have a schedule i mean yeah like like after 35 they become i, I think it's, it's it's 40 it's like it's like it starts to become menopause a, kind of yeah. but like up until then like we're fertile whereas men i think their sexual like peak hits earlier than that yeah our sexual peak for men goes well right 11 and 12 oh that right when we hit puberty <laughs> I, dude, I was playing soccer when I was 11 or 12, bro. I didn't yes. think about fucking jerking me off, bro. <laughs> nah, nah, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like that, I didn't have any that tendencies that like uncle, that. That uncle who had, like, some some magazines underneath the, like, the mattress I, bro, I, kind of thing. I told you, my culture isn't like that. Yeah, so it's, it's like different, different in the West. Exactly. In like, the West, my like, culture as in, like, Korean, because I think Japanese culture is, like, very high. I feel like it's crazy here. Like, there's so many, like... I, I just went to like film stores, there's like so much porn. Not to be like too vulgar, but like they're like so into like big tits here, I realized. And like, yeah, like I don't know, I don't know how I feel about like, I never really watched Japanese porn because it didn't really like well, get me off. Japanese, <laughs> the Japanese guys are sick. Like, they're yeah, they're literally struggling. trains that are dedicated for, for women, women only because they'll grope women. And like, I felt it like 
So literally, like, I had a guy, like, in Shinjuku one time, like, chase me. I'm like, I have a boyfriend, like, please leave me alone. And he kept chasing, he kept, like, coming after me. And I'm like, dude, like, this never happens to me in, like, North America. And then this woman saw me, like, sh struggling, and she came, and she just, like, helped me get out of the situation. Because, like, and there are some very persistent men, and they, like, there's, like, kind of, like, this enabling of, like, rape culture almost, like, especially in the porn side. Yeah, rape it's, culture in Japan is super It's really rape. bad, and, like, no one really speaks up about it either. Like, North America, I think there's the whole, like... I watched yeah. this uh, clip the other day where yeah. there's this girl sleeping in the train, and this fucking 60-year-old guy just starts unzipping his pants and pulling out one of his pubes and just like brushing it off on her face. Oh, I've heard it. You saw that? No, no, I didn't see that story, but I've seen the story of, uh, okay. I, I've heard in Cell the story. So the guy was like on the train, right? And the girl was next to him. Mm -hmm. And he was just like doing his thing. Like he had his pants on, but he was like rubbing it out mm -hmm. on the train. And he was just looked, like, looking at the girl like this and doing his thing. And then I don't know why, but like, the woman, she didn't move. She was just sitting there like, like this. Oh my god. <laughs> Did you have any experience like that? Like personal experience? In terms no, of actually, I, like knock on wood, like I've been very lucky. That's good. Um, yeah. That nothing bad has happened, but there is some bad stuff that happens. And I think, you know, people will say like Japan is very safe and all, but I think there is, as a woman, I think that there are very like perverted men in this country um yeah and i feel like it's a culture where everything is kind of repressed and no one really talks about it so yeah mm. i i feel for women out there yeah but true i was on the train before yeah. and then i don't know if this was a couple or not <clears throat> but the guy was on the train and it was a, a girl a young girl or a, a young woman and then she was just like by the entrance right and then this guy, right, he was, he had his hand on one of the, like, the handles, of the train handles. And so she was just sitting there on her phone. She, the guy just kind of got behind him and was like, he was there and he didn't want to move. Mm. So he was kind of like protruding like his pelvis a little forward. Mm. And he kept kind of like walking up a little bit, like every time too. So I was like looking at the scenario and I was like, I didn't know, I didn't know what was going on, but it looked like the girl was not with him and I don't know why she didn't move. Maybe she, maybe she liked it, I don't know. But, um, but okay, so obviously they're not together. They wasn't together because like, she got off the train and then like after she left, he and then he moved. Mm. But she was just kind of like, and then he was kind of yeah, like Yeah, it's just like really off, uncomfortable situations like that, yeah. Like, it's like 80% of women experience like sexual harassment on, on Trains, right? Yeah, that's like that's a fucked up percentage. I remember I was in Team Borderless Tokyo. Do you mm, guys know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, okay, I was like kind of stupid. Like, I didn't know, but I wore a skirt. And there's a part of the exhibition where the floor is near, and I was with my ex boyfriend, and he he saw this guy. He was taking pictures up my skirt in the exhibition, and he like went up to him like, "What the fuck?" Like, yeah. Damn. Yeah. How did yeah. you feel? Like violated, obviously. Like I was you, like You didn't want to approach the guy who did it? I don't know. I'm not the kind of girl that goes up and like slaps the guy in the face. Like right. I don't know. I just kind of like in shock, like, whoa, there are people actually like like this, I guess. Right. right kind right, of right, right, right. But yeah. Cringe. Yeah, that is cringe. Really. Yeah. yeah. What's your thoughts on like the love hotels out here? Um I think it's like there's I have nothing against it. There should be love hotels in in Canada and like there should be love hotels in every country, bro. Like they're completely sanitary, they clean the yeah. entire space like after. As long as it's like consensual, like what's like there's no issue, like yeah, yeah. you have like, everything space. you need there. Literally. Exactly, everything. Everything you need there is already prepared yeah. for you. It's not like a jacuzzi, like, like yeah. they even <laughs> they even give you free condoms just to practice yeah, like, sex. Safe, like, safe sex. Safe sex, guys. <laughs> I think during COVID in Japan, they rent, uh, girls rented out love hotels to have like just the uh, girls kind of. Hang. Uh, I yeah. love that. I love that. But, so the, the thing that I know about those, not only that is used for just sleeping, because like some businessmen in the working class, they're not, they're not able to go home, so they will 
just go to sleep in a love hotel just to get rest and then go back to work. See, like, that's another thing. It's like, it doesn't need to just be for sex. It can literally, like, in, in North America, you have to rent out the entire, like, day. Whereas, like, it's mm-hmm. like, sometimes I just want, like, want to rent out a place for, like, one or two hours. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't do that. No. You know? No. I mean, like, Right. That's one of the things that we cool to bring over to America, you know. Mm. But we should start a love hotel business. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> but like in America, though, not America, but like in Japan. So like, if there were two friends, right? Like they're not in a relationship; they're just friends who want to get rest, like after a club, four o'clock in the morning. Um, True. So in Japan, two men can't go to a love hotel together and sleep just to get rest where here in japan in general they don't see it as like oh they're together like a couple right okay that part is yeah but women two women even if they're not like together obviously they're just friends who want to get sleep it's okay it's allowed Mm -hmm. but men can't do it really yeah yeah see like i don't agree with that like it it should just be yeah yeah it is I think this culture is very sexualized. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely sexual. Would you, um, like, would you guys be interested in going to, like, an abandoned love hotel? Yeah. Like, some of the stuff. That sounds 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 fun. fun. It sounds fun and sexy, yeah. Mm, That's been on my list for a hot minute, but can't do it. An abandoned love hotel. Wow. I haven't found the right people to, to do that with. Okay. Aban- abandoned, f- abandoned love hotel. What's abandoned love hotels like, though? I mean, is it basically like another goat? Like a haunted house? Basically. Basically, uh, it's like the suspense because... Are there things like love abandoned love hotels? Yeah, they're, they're pretty, pretty common in Japan. Oh. Like, Dude, I'd know. rather go to like a abandoned mental asylum. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool too. Like, yeah, I'd, be, I'd rather go to that. I think that'd be a vibe though. Just like, oh, I'm going to go to a convenience store, get some food. Play like Uno or something in a love hotel, abandoned love abandoned hotel. Love that would be hotel. cool because everybody knows like the true meaning of a love hotel, mm-hmm. pretty uni- like globally. So I think just going to one and just like damn, we're just bombing out and it's kind of eerie, you know. I think it's kind of cool. Do you guys have any uh, fetishes, mm, like freaky? He's fetishes? getting, he's getting in it. Yes. Like, is there anything that you, <laughs> you guys uh, <laughs> like during? Um, like, is, are you uh... Like, if we're kinky people? Are you a masochist? Or are you sadistic? Are you into... <laughs> kind of... Like, it's like, going too like, extreme. Like, are you into like... Like, like dirty talk and like all that? Like, ear fetish, like pee pee or <laughs> shit like that. Yeah. Like, mm. like golden, golden... Yeah. Shower, golden shower. shower. Yeah. I feel like... Like, for me, I feel like... A, I'm speaking for like a lot of girls. We like to like... <laughs> like we like the, the standard like getting our ass slapped <laughs> like getting choked it's so cool, dominated bit. yes i like to be dominated being led on by the guys. like I, I don't mind trying the other side where like the woman dominates man but like that's not something i've really experienced like i like to feel dominated i mean like you do too what to well, feel like, dominated feel a little dominated like the girl take like, control the... not like we do all the work bro well, guys know. love being dominated like yeah, we do. Okay, I'm taking notes. Like yeah. trust me, man. A lot of guys. Because like, I mean, I mean, like you guys know what a starfish is, right? Most mm-hmm. women do like mm-hmm. the starfish, and the guys do all the work. True. So like, when a guy is kind of thrown off, and it's like a girl just like, no. Like, I feel like there's a big mm-hmm. misconception that sex is a guy's duty. A yeah. lot of people relate it to as a like male. duty isn't like he does as in she should be the one leading he mm-hmm. should be the one taking care but i feel like it's 50 50 in my opinion i mm-hmm. think both should equally have fun um take turns i guess try different things out experience that's what i'm saying like in a long-term relationship i don't want it to like be like oh it's a long-term thing so like the sex kind of dies out like if anything, I would want to like continue the spark somehow. So like spice things up, as they say. Yeah, like it's I feel like okay, like what are you into? Like is that something you want to try? Like I'd be willing to like I'd be open to try it because I feel like for me, like for me to feel really close to my partner, I need to have that physical intimacy. And so, mm. 
if they're wanting, like if they have a, like a sort of kink that they want to try, like I would be open to that. Yeah. Dude, I'm just telling you this right now. All guys have kinks. Please. Um, they just don't speak up because. So what's your what's your fetish? I like being dominated. Bro. Like. Okay. I love okay. being tight. Have you watched the the um the show? I watched Succession. Mm -mm. It's an American TV show. It's like this like um he's like a hedge fund manager and then he like. Is it um Fifty Shades of Grey? No. no, no, no. But it's actually a really good show. You should watch Succession. Um, it's an American TV show, and it's this hedge fund manager, and and then he has this therapist, but she dominates like the fuck out of him because he's always the one that's dominating like in his workplace. He's like the manager, but then in the bed, I feel like he wants to be like. Dude, that's why. The submissive one. That's why a lot of like. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't think like we're like we, like used to being like women or not used to that. But I think like with practice, like I, think, I, yeah. I I would be open to it. Like I would try. Like that's the thing. Like I want like if I'm in a relationship, I'm like ride or die. So it's like, like if that's what my partner's interested in, like I would like try it out. Try it out. Yeah, I wouldn't be afraid to. I would maybe be a bit shy, but if I drink a little bit, I'll be fine. <laughs> I think if you're in that kind of relationship where there's an open communication, yes. it's super oh, healthy. Willing, yes. It's gonna it's a long lasting relationship. It's a healthy relationship. It adds spice to your sex life, exactly. I guess. Um, like you, you just like I don't want it to be like so vanilla all the time and just like gets boring. Cause like after a while it just like it's like the same shit, you know? Like I wanna ask you like Does sex become Oh, boy. Yeah, no, like, like, no, like, that's what I was gonna say. Like, I feel like my first long term relationship, I was, like, it was my first, but we were together for four and a half years, and then my partner wanted to try, like, a open relationship. Ah. Uh. And he wanted to try threesome, and then I was, like, hesitant at first, but then, um, I don't know, I opened up to it. Like, what is your guys' opinions about, like, open relationships, I guess? Like, are you for it, against it? Like, I'm generally against it. Okay. I think if you commit to a relationship, you should commit to one. I can see the culture behind open relationships mm -hmm. where yeah. some partners might say they're okay with it. Some partners might say they're not okay with it. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I think it's a conversation that those two partners should have. Yeah. <laughs> it's def it, it definitely needs to be discussed between two both parties. Yeah. yeah. Because, like, again, some people get bored but then they still like again they cheat right so they still want to have like some type of like promiscuous you know like action towards other people without the other person knowing but then yeah at the same time if you're polygamous you're like everybody's they agree as long as i prove with this person that you're with they have some type of like difference because like i mean if you're married to somebody, you have to admit, like, you have to give them props for being married for so long. Mm. You honestly will be bored after a while. Yeah, like, you'll have tendencies, bro. Yeah, but. so, like, everybody who's even married, they do have, like, they think outside the box, like, hmm, man, this person. That's why cheating is such a common thing in Japan, too, because. I heard this. Open communication mm -hmm. is non existent between, like, married That's, couples. Like, more than ever, like, in Japan, like, prostitution and, like, that whole, like, I don't know, I think it's just so much more prevalent than North America, I think. Like, there's so many, like, I don't know, like, girls clubs or, I don't know, like, um, what do you call them? Suzuku. Like so, bath bathhouses. Yes, of, yes. Bath houses. There's like so many. Like Shinjuku, yes, so many. But like just every neighborhood, there is. Like, just come home from work and you just go there, and then you go back home to your family. I don't know. I think it's better to communicate how you honestly feel. But yeah, to answer your question, mm, yeah, I am. If I, I'm more curious in terms of relationships, so I'm kind of against the open relationships. Monogamous. Right? Yeah, I'm very monogamous. Like if I'm on, if I were to You're commit right, to. Yeah. Yeah, one person that I'm going to commit to her. I'll probably have tendencies throughout my life, right? Of course, I'm going to feel the urge to meet other girls and shit like that. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I think it's self-control. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think... And communicating, yeah. honestly. Would you say you're jealous of your partner? Like, if they I think do it, something? I think it... Like, do you think being an influencer is a real job? 
Because I think some people really, like, it, it is really their job. So why do you feel like it's not? It's... Do you feel like it was how you were raised and what a job is? Like, it was kind of what we were talking about earlier. Like, that's a really good point, actually, about mm -hmm. how you're raised, too. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very important determining factor into what you do. <laughs> Mm -hmm. certain things as a job and what's not mm -hmm. but for me I just see it as a tool uh, again like I don't want to be a broken record here but do you think McDonald's is a real job? <clears throat> I think mm -hmm. so okay so That's... do you think like so you know when a uh, teenager right mm -hmm. you know they get their first job is that like at a fast food restaurant or a retail place mm -hmm. Do you think, I mean, like, it's obviously it's a stimulus. So doing YouTube can be a stimulus to an adult job as well. They can learn some valuable benefits from that as well. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, once they change their mind, it's like, okay, let me just convert to doing what everyone else is doing. So in my first time experience, just since I am doing YouTube, it's kind of like the, I'll tell you why I started YouTube. Okay. I never thought of YouTube as, uh, an outlet or a vessel for me to make money. I only saw it as a tool for marketing myself. Mm -hmm. So I never thought I would be like a full-time YouTuber where I would do like three to five videos a week. Mm. That's a lot. That's a People lot. do that though, right? Yeah, like Mr. Beast and shit, like yeah. huge props to that guy. But yeah. um, for me, it was more as an extension of myself. I wanted to market myself. I wanted to show what I liked, show what I was interested in. Um, kind of share your personal. Give my point of view in Japan as a foreigner. Mm -hmm. So it was more of a hobby. Right. So I never really thought of it as a full time job. Okay, like what's your opinion of someone like, for example, Jake Paul? See, Jake Paul, though? Good strategy. He's fucking, I think he's smart. Okay. Because he's done some embarrassing ass shit okay. all these years and still able to hold himself, hold himself accountable mm -hmm. as influential as he is. But then he also extended himself to becoming a, a boxer. Yeah. yeah. A like boxer. He's almost he's like a professional. And he's really doing that as a full time career. Now, I think that was like a smart move on his part, yeah. So all these years where he's been doing all this like shit that he didn't want to do, I'm guessing, is for him to prepare for that this moment, which is to become a fighter. Yeah. Right? Like he's growing professionally, right. honestly. I started watching Jake Paul when he was like in like in Vine. He was like a Viner. And then I remember like, Vine. Yeah, dude. Vine. And then he progressed into YouTube. And then after that, like now yeah, he's a UFC fighter. I don't know, I feel like some people really have a vision of where they mm -hmm. want to be, but not but everyone has that kind of vision, so... I think my long-term vision, though, is making creative jobs as easy as possible from Japan. So, outsourcing okay. from Japan. For okay. example, let's say someone overseas wants to make clothes in Japan. Okay. So like it's very, very difficult because it's super hard to communicate with Japanese manufacturers. Um, language barrier, culture barrier, whatever, right? I want to be the middleman mm. to eradicate all of that kind of impediments that happens between the two. Really letting um, foreigners overseas to make clothes in Japan with Japanese fabric, whatever. And or, there's like a big demand for yeah, that. Yeah, let's say, yes. yeah, if they want to do a photo shoot in Japan, they can do a photo shoot in so being a creative consultant agency in Japan that can outsource overseas is my ultimate goal. Mm. Yeah. So being able to help smaller businesses, independent businesses, people that are starting to look for a creative career, I want to be the amplifier to that. Of course, it's very <laughs> idealistic, but it's an end goal that I have. Um, it's hopefully something that I can do in the future. When did, you, still, yeah. Yeah. But when did this pop up, like, being a consultant? I mean, like, you... I'm like four years ago, dude. Yeah. 
Mm. Before I even started this brand, I wanted to be a consultant in some area. Mm. So. Yeah. Wow, well, I feel like I'm like literally in the same position as you right now. Like I want to make an impact. And you understand this market very well. Like you, un because you've been here for a certain amount of years, and you speak Japanese, mm. and you understand Japanese culture. You understand how this culture works and how people interact and how business is conducted. Mm -hmm. and English I think, and Korean. Yeah, that's something that most people, even if they try to learn Japanese, they can't understand this, all like the different nuances and like communication, like just how you communicate with other Japanese people and stuff like that, so. At the end of the day, that, that's like my goal, for sure. I was like, didn't think you had a goal, man. Of course I have a goal. Like, I know you had a goal. I'm not gonna yeah. share my ingredients with everyone. Yeah, like, 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 fuck, of course I have a goal. Share your yeah, necklace, man. Yeah, I, I think mean, everyone should have a goal. Homemade. Long term recipe. and short term. Like, short term, sure. That's like, facts. That's facts. Your long term goal is what? You wanna. I mean, like, people will find out, right? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's yeah. better to not no. say it. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. manifest it myself. True, sure, because sure. people will have. You know expectations of you so you don't want to do that right so i don't know why the fuck i talked about my own goals but i mean like the thing is i know you have but like, this is just like the surface level right mm -hmm. you probably have, most likely you have deeper goals too. what motivates you to work mm -hmm. experience and whatever it is that i'm trying to achieve so like Let's say, let's say that you, you're trying to achieve something and then there's a lot of losses, right? Maybe there's a, like an intentional reason why you're losing so much. So then at the end of the, like the end of all these losses, like there's a win at the end because like you're experiencing some certain things to improve yourself. And then those losses are making you better. So then like, when that time, I guess when that time is there for you, for whatever it is that you choose to do, you'll have that experience to, to be like the, the absolute best that you can be. And then when people find you, they're just like kind of questioning like, like, dang, like, like where you, like, where the hell have you been this whole time? Like, yeah. that's how I see it. What do you say? I don't know. I feel like, for example, I've been in the modeling world. I think there's so much that is placed on how you look. Just to build something for myself, like not based, like like something based on how you look, it's like, I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty easy. Like you don't have to like really work that hard towards uh -huh. that. What? Oh. No, you agree? Uh, so, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, that, not that it's not, like you have to stay in shape and stuff like that, but like I think, the business world is very cutthroat, is what I've realized. And I don't know, I kind of want to like become like thick skinned. Like, I don't want to be. But that's what people are afraid of nowadays, right? Being cutthroat in this, you know, yeah, but I think corporate like, world. That's why they resort to being like influencers or TikTokers or YouTubers because they don't think they have the enough sorry. skill set or resources to be able to compete with others in the corporate world. Isn't yeah, but like I kind of want, want to become like a bad bitch in that sense. <laughs> like, <laughs> like sorry, I want to become unfazed, like by what people will tell me, and people will tell me otherwise. But I know I'm capable of more. I think like I want to like start my own business in the future. But in order for me to get there, I need to like gain experience in the corporate world to, like, really like become good at like whatever whatever I'm good at. I think I'm good at like communicating with people and talking to people and like empathizing with people, but I want to become stronger at whatever it is that I'm good at. It's 2023, but I think people based off how you look or like where you're from or whatever, they, they're like, they underestimate you. Mm -hmm. End of the day, it's like, we all experience the same stuff regardless, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, that's very true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. Word to that. More to that. Cheers, right? Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers strong and to yeah. the what you're drinking, but. <laughs> yeah, do you see? Yeah, do you see? So, lastly, anything you guys want to talk about before we close this off? Yeah, this was our first time, the three of us hanging out, just 
True. Like, we all knew each in other, book, right? In the four or five years of us knowing each other, like, this is our first time meeting yeah, out. Yeah. yeah, bro. Yeah. It's crazy. But I'm, I'm curious, does it seem like, does it seem like it's our first time hanging out with yeah. each other? Like, yeah, I, I was actually really surprised that it was our first time. Yeah, no, I was thinking about it. Yeah, right here. yeah. It's not. It yeah. is. It is our first time. That's crazy, yeah. bro. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, the, the beer is hitting me at this point. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of fun. No, this is fun. Um, thank you guys for partaking. Thank you for that? having me. I just, honestly, like, can I be real with you guys? Yeah, you can. I love you guys. And um, I just wanted to find a way to kill time, to be honest with you guys. <laughs> Well, that, without having similar. to kill ourselves going out and just fucking wandering around without any plans yeah so i just want to do this like sit down chit chat thing and uh having no kind of format unfiltered and all that and uh being yeah. able to open up on ourselves and yeah it was fun it was, it was good um nice thank you guys, guys for watching um let us know if you guys want to ask any more questions probably maybe in the future if you were to do this again, mm. you like, mm, questionable. Mm. <laughs> but it was super fun, and um, mm. yeah. Bye. Johnny. Johnny. <laughs> I'm super late, bro.